Hi guys, it's Ben here. Liverpool are out of the FA Cup. Liverpool are out of sorts and Liverpool are without an, a trophy um, for the what must be the sixth season in a row. Uh, and it was a dire, dire performance. Probably the worst, um, among the worst I've seen under Jurgen Klopp uh, since he joined in 2015. Um, out of ideas just completely weren't ourselves there today um, or we, you could say we were ourselves defensively because we're very used to having these sort of days uh, they do crop up every now and then and it's fucking annoying uh, and the way the, or the way we didn't even try and chase the game properly was um, so frustrating I mean coming in at 3-1 down at half time you'd expect the second half to be um, just full of us attacking full of us creating chances and you know um, putting, a, putting the West Brom defence under pressure, but we didn't do that. We were putting lazy, tired crosses in from deep that Foster was just lapping up all day. It was so predictable, so boring, and almost every player was accountable, just, just as the case was at Swansea. Almost every player was accountable, every player was off their game. I can't think of anyone that um, did themselves justice. Um, so, I mean, if you, if you look, just go back to the start of the game, Firmino scores a lovely goal. Looks like it's going to be a comfortable evening. Um, but of course, we can see straight away the midfield are absolutely non existent. Emery Chan and Georgina Van Alden tonight were absolutely disgraceful. Um, Rodriguez walked us through. Van Dyke might have been fouled by Robson Carlo, but the goal stands. Uh, and then the second goal is a disgrace again. Chan is just schooled by Krzysztofiak. Uh, who just walks his past him with ease. Chan could have brought him down, he could have uh, been quicker to him, he could have been more physical, he could have wanted it more. Goes out wide um, to, who was it, was it Chris Brown, whoever, whoever it was on the left-hand side. Um, oh, Trent Alexander-Arnold gets completely done, the cross comes in, and Moreno is nowhere near uh, Jay Rodriguez, um, and it's an easy 2-1. <laughs> Lucky not to be three-one when they when they score from a corner through Dawson. It's ruled out thanks to VAR. Um, the fence is nowhere. Mignolet doesn't even come. Mignolet was fucking dreadful tonight. Uh, we get the penalty. Firmino hits the woodwork. Um, VAR, by the way, uh, obviously a lot of attention on that tonight. I thought it was I thought it was um, helpful. Obviously, it helped Liverpool, but um, it helped the game get to the correct decisions. It, it was offside for Dawson's header. It was a penalty on Salah. Um, so ultimately, yes, it took a long time, but um, the correct decisions were made, and that's obviously uh, how how it should be. Um, one, I couldn't believe there were only four minutes of injury time in the first half, with two big breaks, two long breaks for VAR, two substitutions for West Brom, loads of uh, which were because of injury stoppages. You get uh, four goals, and you get four minutes of added time. Uh, in the second half, you also get four minutes of added time when it's just substitutions, no injury stoppages, and just one goal. I, I, I'll never understand the how the referees get to how they get to um, the amount of time they add on. But anyway, um, and then the three-one goal is an own goal by Matip, who is. I stop myself saying something there. <sighs> Our worst centre back, um, if you ask me. I think he's fucking so overrated. Um, same with Moreno, overrated. I, I, I just not was never buying into this resurgence uh, that so many would seem to think he's had. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's a section of fans on Twitter that love John Matip. There's a section of fans on Twitter that love Alberto Moreno. I'll never understand either party. Robertson's not perfect, but he's much better than Moreno. Clavin's not perfect, but I think he's our second best centre back, and that that in itself is, is an issue. Van Dijk's poor tonight. It doesn't look comfortable there. Um, obviously, you know, not, not not time to panic yet because it's only his third game or whatever. But big, you know, obviously a bit of a concern that he. Uh, hasn't quite settled yet since that um, great uh, win against Everton, great performance he, he put in there, but Swansea he wasn't quite there, obviously a mistake leading to the goal there and not not convincing tonight either, so that's that's another issue. Uh, but I think the whole defence was dreadful, the fullbacks were absolutely appalling, the goalkeeper was appalling, the two central midfielders, Chan and Wijnaldum, are utterly, utterly dreadful. Alexander-Arnold at right back had a, had a horrible, horrible night, his crossing was awful, um, his touch was dreadful, just not his night at all. Uh, Oxley chamberlain barely had a kick, he, he, he'd be forgiven for not reali realising he was playing, his set pieces weren't as, <gasps> excuse me, weren't as good as usual, um, is what it is. Uh, Salah's off it, Mane can't get into it, Firmino scores, misses the penalty, he's pro probably our best player to be honest with you, but still not on his A game you'd say. 
Um, and the subs, Henderson, Milner and, and Ings come on. I, I don't understand taking Mane off or Oxlade Chamberlain, really two players that can make something happen. Um, whereas Milner just kind of comes on and lofts the ball into the box a few times. Henderson um, doesn't really change the game. Danny Ings does okay, move, his movement's good. and I, I, I like Danny Ings, I think he actually did probably the best of the three subs that came on in terms of impact, although it's still minute. Uh, but Liverpool are in a slump again. Two defeats on the bounce after 18 unbeaten. Is it panic time? I don't know, but two back-to-back -back performances like that. And suddenly uh, a tricky-looking game against Huddersfield in midweek, it seems now. Whereas uh, if this game had come up a couple of weeks ago, you'd say it was a breeze. But now it's kind of looking like a tricky one. Uh, and then we've got Spurs straight after that. So a key couple of games in the red season, really, in terms of finishing, finishing the top four. The fact they're out of the FA Cup now... Um, it gives more of a break between games. Whether that's a good or a bad thing, I don't know. But another season, probably without silverware. We've got the Champions League, um, but obviously with performances like that and with the squad in the state it's in, post Coutinho, um, you'd be surprised if, if we go uh, to, to the final there. And There's been a brigade on Twitter that have been um, sort of bemoaning the fact they haven't signed anyone. And of course I can see that their argument. Um, we have lost with Coutinho in the side. Let, 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 let's not um, let's not pretend that we're we're uh, perfect with Coutinho, um, and let's not pretend that Thomas Lamar comes in and solves everything. Just like Van Dijk coming in didn't solve everything, as you could as you saw tonight. Um, I think I think we're still four or five players short of being a team that can compete for you know several trophies a season. Uh, Cater being one of those players, a goalkeeper being one of those players, probably a better fullback being one of those players, whether that's Nathaniel Klein or, or, or a new addition. Um, a cent another central midfielder probably, another attacking option probably. So let's not pretend that Thomas Lamar is going to come in and lead us to, to trophies and top four finishes and what have you, uh, because that's simply not the case, even if he does come in, which is, as it seems, unlikely. Um, so. There'll be doom and gloom. There'll be doom and gloom. Post. There'll be some post mortem going on. There'll be people trying to get to the bottom of what's wrong and how we can rectify it. Um, my focus and the manager's focus will be on improving the, the the team and how they play, rather than panicking about who we should and shouldn't sign because it happens to be the January window. So let's not make all the talk about transfers, please. Let's talk about how bad some players were tonight, and let's please acknowledge that Moreno is still not good enough to be Liverpool's starting left back. Uh, Matip is criminally overrated. Um, Emre Chan is one of the most inconsistent players we've got. And Gini Van Aldum is becoming a bit of a problem in that he's just becoming anonymous and not taking enough responsibility and not active enough, not proactive enough in the middle of the park. Um, so I'll do, I'll do some quick player ratings. Mignolet 4, Trent Alexander Arnold 4, Joel Matip 4, Virgil van Dijk 4, Alberto Moreno 4. Uh, Emre Chan for Genie Van Alden for uh, Alex Oxlade Chamberlain five Sadio Mane five Mohamed Salah six Roberto Firmino seven there you go there's your player ratings I look forward to all of you arguing with that and saying I'm harsh on people but we've just lost we conceded three against West Brom and it could have been more and they were the better side they deserved it they were the ones that looked more likely to add to those goals whereas we had no ideas and we look ahead to Tuesday um, there you go so leave a comment with your thoughts leave a comment with your reaction to that game and the fact that we're out of the FA Cup the fact that we're so so surely in defence uh, and out of ideas in the attack for lots of that game, uh, your thoughts on VAR will be interesting too. I, for one, think it was good. Um, obviously, it, it could be quicker, but um, <laughs> it's just rather exciting. It, it, was, it was an exciting phase of the game that between um, between them going two one up and them going three one up, where we had the disallowed goal and the missed penalty and all the VAR nonsense. I, I loved it. I loved it. I mean, I, I didn't love how we were playing, but. Yeah, anyway, right, subscribe if you're new. Um, it's not always this doom and gloom. It's not always this um, monot monotonous, uh, if that's even a word. And follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook. It's Ben Might Say on all of those platforms. And I will see you next time where I'll be previewing Huddersfield or talking about a new signing. Who knows? See you next time.